So hi, hello and welcome, Micropuncture here and uh, today I'd like to put some human blood, my own blood, uh, under the microscope and of course I would like to explain to you the different types of blood cells, the white and the red blood cells that can be found in the blood and what their function is and as a matter of fact I'm also going to show you some moving white blood cells on the time lapse, looks uh, quite nice as well and at the end of the video if you also want to observe your own blood under the microscope, I'm going to show you how I've done this as well. Well, what we see over here, these are some moving red blood cells. I just paused the video a little bit so that we can have a slightly closer look. And we can already see um, the red blood cells and they are disc shaped. Uh, if you are able to follow the arrow over here, they are a little bit like flat donuts uh, and uh, you're if you look carefully, also able to see that some of them have a really strange shape. Um, they look a little bit like, like I don't know, uh, like star shapes, um, like yeah, very irregular a little bit, um, and uh, yeah, with uh, edges and a little bit pointed. These are called um, acanthocytes, and uh, they start to form uh, because the blood that you see over here started to dry up uh, under my microscope slide. So this is a completely normal phenomenon that happens uh, when blood starts to dry up. And another thing that you're able to see here is, is um, these uh, structures, that you, these strange looking structures over here, these are of course air bubbles and they're quite nice because it kind of shows how the blood is able to flow around these air bubbles um, as well. Now the red blood cells, they are there because they transport oxygen and they're pretty important because oxygen cannot be transported by the blood plasma itself. itself. The blood plasma is the liquid part of the blood and oxygen does not dissolve very well in the blood plasma because uh, blood plasma which contains mostly water um, is not able to dissolve uh, oxygen very well um, and the red blood cells that you see over here thousands of them <laughs> as a matter of fact um, those red blood cells contain a protein called hemoglobin and this hemoglobin has a very high affinity for oxygen. So the oxygen which is picked up by the lungs, not by the lungs, but the red blood cells pick up oxygens at the lungs and, and the oxygen will go into the hemoglobin of the red blood cells. Now uh, basically I paused the video right now because I want you to have a very close look at this uh, funny little cell over here. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, when I start the video, look what this one does uh, because this is actually quite nice. Look, it starts to move and crawl. This, as a matter of fact, is a white blood cell um, and uh, some of the white blood cells are able to move because they are hunting uh, for bacteria um, and they're eating up bacteria and therefore they're able to prevent or at least, uh, yeah, they're able to prevent diseases. And you see um, a couple of others um, as well. So let me pause the video again um, over here. Here we see quite nicely those uh, star-shaped uh, yeah, red blood cells because um, as uh, water starts to evaporate and the blood starts to dry up, um, the red blood cells also start to lose water and then they start to form um, yeah, and um, into those funny looking shapes. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, in, on the different parts of the microscope slide, you are able to also see different uh, shapes. Uh, so in the center, the red blood cells look a little bit different than at the edges where more water is able to evaporate. Yeah, um, yeah, and right behind me, <laughs> I have to move a little bit at the side to the side here. You hear another um, another white blood cell crawling around and uh, looking um, for for some food. Here again, uh, very nicely see, seen. You can see quite nicely a couple of thousand red blood cells, and there are billions uh, of them in a very small droplet. So uh, one interesting thing um, is, however, that the affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen is not constant. I need to explain this a little bit. Now, the hemoglobin is important so that oxygen is able to bind to it so that it can even be transported in the first place. But now imagine the situation that the hemoglobin would not release the oxygen anymore. Now that would be a problem. If the affinity is so high that the oxygen does not even want to leave anymore, then you cannot really transport the oxygen at all because the oxygen has to again be unloaded at the muscles which require a lot of oxygen. And for this reason, there is a so-called called a Bohr effect, uh, named according to Christian Bohr. He was a Danish uh, uh, physiologist uh, um, back uh, in the day and he discovered that uh, the blood, the hemo hemoglobin rather, has a very strong affinity to oxygen at the lungs and a very low affinity to oxygen at 
the muscles. So this means that the oxygen is released again at the muscles and uh, uh, is picked up at the lungs. And this actually um, allows a very efficient oxygen transport. And this bore effect is actually due to the level of carbon dioxide concentration and the acidity of the blood. The acidity of the blood and the carbon dioxide concentration is different um, in the muscles compared to the lungs. And yeah, the situation is even more complex. Uh, the affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen also depends on the number of oxygen uh, molecules that have already bound to the hemoglobin. So once you start uh, to bind, so once a hemoglobin started to bind oxygen, yeah, it becomes even easier for it to bind even more oxygen. And while I was talking about the red blood cells and the hemoglobin all the time, you can see in the background, of course, also the white blood cells uh, doing their work. And this is now going to be the next um, cell type that I would like to talk about. The white blood cells, yes, uh, they are also known as uh, leukocytes uh, and uh, they essentially are there to protect the body uh, from disease. And there are two ways in how it's able to do that. And one way we're able to see over here. Yeah, uh, these are phagocytes and what they do is, is they crawl around and they look for bacteria and other invaders and they start to engulf them. So basically they eat them up and then um, those bacteria are digested away. Now, this is um, a very important line of defense, uh, but there is a second uh, uh, line of defense as well. And these are uh, basically done by the so-called um, the lymphocytes. And these lymphocytes, what they do is, is they produce antibodies and those antibodies are able to bind against uh, the bacteria, the invaders, even also against viruses. And this is how they're able to neutralize them. Yeah, and uh, there are billions and billions of these uh, red blood cells in our blood, of course, but you've probably already seen that the proportion of white blood cells is actually much lower um, in the blood. Um, and uh, still, uh, what they are able to do is, is they are able to uh, track down bacteria and they're able to move to those places where there is an infection. And this is then where the concentration of the white blood cells also becomes significantly higher. Now, uh, what I would like to do now um, as well is, is I would like to now show you if a, a short uh, clip on how you can observe blood yourself under the microscope. It's fairly easy to do, uh, but you have to make sure that the film of blood is very, very thin. Yeah, I use the Lancet, a sterile Lancet, uh, which I bought it uh, yeah, um, recently and uh, it makes a very small, uh, yeah, a very small injury, of course, in the skin. You have to press very hard and then you put um, a small drop of blood to the edge of the cover of um, not the, the microscope slide and then you use a pretty big cover glass um, and uh, I've, I'm using a big cover glass because what I want to do is I want to make sure and I have to move out of the side a little bit um, I want to make sure that the blood is able to spread over a larger area uh, because this actually makes sure that the film of blood the blood layer is very thin and this way the individual red blood cells are also become more and more separated um, normally when you uh, put the blood under the microscope what you do is, is you let it dry in the open air you kind of streak it out on the slide and then you have a thin layer of, of blood on the microscope slide but um, I'm not doing that because I want to make sure that the blood actually remains liquid so that I'm able to see the movement um, of uh, the white blood cells and of course also the streaming motion of the red blood cells. Yeah, and uh, if you uh, basically are successful with um, observing uh, those uh, blood cells, then I would like to encourage you that you simply follow it along a little bit for an, a couple of minutes and then you can actually also see how the shape of those red blood cells changes um, over time as the blood sample slowly starts uh, uh, to dry up. Well, I think uh, for today, that's all I want uh, to share with you. It's a very um, interesting, also very easy specimen uh, to observe, provided that you're brave enough to, to prick yourself with a lancet, of course. Um, and then, uh, yeah, human blood or generally the blood of mammals is a very fascinating thing to look at. I leave it at that uh, today. I hope that you liked the video. Do please uh, do consider subscribing if you did. Um, I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.